I want you to watch a fascinating clip with Loué Ahmed, who was raised to be an Islamist in Yemen and has had a remarkable transformation to becoming a pro-Israel and pro-peace advocate. Um, here he is being interviewed on Elon Levy's State of a Nation podcast, where he explains that the hostility that we see towards Israel, the Palestine movement, for those people that think this is about a nationalist movement, freeing Palestine, having a Palestinian state, that would be to totally revise history, to totally revise reality. It is about religion, it's about their view of the Jews and the threat of a Jewish state, a Jewish people returning to their land, what that, how that totally challenges and threatens the Islamist ideology. And he explains that. You don't have to take my word for it. He explains this clearly. Have a watch for what he says. What the main discourse that was happening in my brain when I believed firmly in the Quran was there's heaven and hell. And those are the main, uh, those are the cornerstones of existence. So in the minds of many Muslims who, who get firmly brainwashed into believing in heaven and hell, when you believe that there are good things you do and there are bad things you do, and you could either end up in hell or heaven, and then we have one enemy. So that, that kind of like sits in your mind as a c criteria of what you should do and not do. So like, the, you know, in, in Islam you have like the angels and the devils, and the Jews are the devils. So like no matter what you do, like as long as you fight the Jews, as long as you kill the Jews, because it is religious, there's a lot of politics, but there's also a lot of religion. So when I hated the Jews, it was not just about Palestine. It was not just about Gaza. It was a firm belief that the Jews are evil people that try to kill Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. that the, 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 there's even like um, a, a conquest that we learn about where Prophet Muhammad ordered the slaughtering of an entire uh, Jewish village. This is Haibar? Yeah. Haibar. And this is the chant we hear so often on streets in the West, Haibar, Haibar al Yahud, which is, which is a war cry, right? Uh, exactly. When that, when that happened in, in Sweden, actually, the, the, they were going on the street and they were yelling Haibar, Haibar, Sofia Ard, and like the Swedish discourse was, oh, they're just, you know, fighting for Palestine and stuff. They mean jihad in the nice way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I translated the video actually to Swedish and I actually gave, actually, you don't know what they're talking about. And when I did that, the video went, but this was a long time ago, the video went viral and people started understanding, but there were no news articles talking about it. Because in Sweden, there's this... But I'm going to stop him there. And I want to just focus on a few points he made there. Because there are some people who try to still, even after the evil of October 7th, people who still try to make the case that the Israel-Palestine issue is just about a legitimate grievance of the Palestinians, the so-called Palestinians, even though the whole notion was created as a cynical ploy to get rid of Israel. And they say that if, if they just got their state, then they'd be happy, there'd be peace. And that would be to be totally blind to reality, to be totally blind to what the Palestinian leaders, both past and present, said explicitly was their cause, was their goal. It was not about setting up a Palestinian state because the leaders were happy to be part of other Arab countries, to be taken over by another Islamic country. The Grand Mufti was happy to be part of southern Syria. He considered the land of Israel to be part of southern Syria. It's not about a nationalist cause or a distinct people. They're Arabs. They come from, descended from the, the, the Islamic co uh, conquest of the 7th century. And so the point is that their issue is religious. It is a threat of having the Jewish people, who they believe were God's discarded people, basically told to forever wander the earth, cursed. And their proof was, look, the Jews were in exile, they're oppressed. So what does it mean when suddenly God sticks to his original plan and promise and returns the Jewish people to their homeland? Maybe he never fors fors had forsaken them. So this is what's going on here, and that's why it's so threatening, because it threatens their whole Islamist worldview, this idea of they are the new chosen people, that is, you know, Islam is going to dominate the world. And so that's why it's so threatening, and that's why the Jews must be their enemy. That's why, really, we see the battles that the Jews have had to face throughout history, the oppression they face have been with the other monotheistic uh, religions, the, 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 the children of Judaism, because they're basically competing to say, no, we now have the new... Um, with the new vessels for God's voice. And uh, I found it really interesting, one thing in particular that's also um, very enlightening, which is he says that the whole kind of 
doctrine that animates them, that he was raised in Yemen, was one of heaven and hell, reward and punishment. That's what we often hear. They invoke before uh, they do a terrible act of uh, terrorism that, you know, Hamas and other Islamists, they'll say Allahu Akbar, they'll be so excited because they think they're going to get their Jannah, their, their, their reward in heaven for what they do. It's, it's, it seems like it's, you know, religious and they're kind of serving a higher power. Actually, Judaism would say, and this is why one of the big distinctions and big um, revolutionary ideas of Judaism, Judaism would say, if you are doing these religious acts in order to get your reward, who exactly are you serving? Yeah, you're going to die and yes, it's going to be painful. But why are you doing it? Why are you so excited? Because you're going to get your reward in heaven. You're not serving God. Sorry, you're not serving God. You're serving yourself. It's like marrying someone for money. You say, I'm going to, well, I'll marry you, but it's because I want the money. You're serving God, even though, of course, this isn't what God would want, but they think it's what their their construct of God wants. And they do it, why? Because they think they're going to gonna, gonna get a reward. You're marrying someone for money. You're not serving God, you're serving yourself. It's actually very selfish. And so when people do things and die because they want to go to heaven and get the heavenly pleasure, God says, no, that's not the purpose of life. I didn't create you in order for you to get to heaven. And that's where religion goes wrong. And that's where Judaism actually differs massively from, from other religions and other faiths. It actually becomes a very burdensome, stressful and toxic kind of relationship with religion when it's all about you, you're in trouble, you've got to get to heaven. And it becomes all about self-service. It's burdensome, it's abusive because we never chose or agreed to be in this world. We have to suddenly do all these things. Now, of course, they take it to extremes in terms of what they think God wants of them. But even people who have, let's say, a healthy view of what God wants, if you do it for the sake of reward, it becomes toxic, burdensome and self-serving. Judaism introduced this idea that you're here because God, not for you to come to heaven, but because God wishes to come down to earth. And so the Jewish people don't celebrate death because we don't want to go there. Death is a necessary temporary evil in this fallen world. But the whole reason we're in this fallen world is in order to bring godliness into a world in which God is not necessarily evident. So we can partner with him in bringing him into this world. And that's why we, the Jewish people, say to life, l'chaim. Not because we're scared of death, but because life is where you can serve God. Where we can do his will, which is to come down to earth. And this is one of the big battles that we're seeing and will play out between the Jewish worldview and the Islamic worldview. And you know what? More and more people are going to come round to recognise that this is just logically true and obvious. It is logically true that if you're doing what you think is the will of God in order to get your reward, you're not serving him, you're serving yourself. And it's also logically true to say that if God creates me and puts us on this earth, it doesn't make sense to say I'm the needy one, I'm the one that has to get to heaven. If you're a creator, you create for a purpose for your own need, for your own desire, for your own plan and project. So the one who started this is the one with the real need, with the real plan, and that's God. And that's where we have a major difference of opinion. And that is why you have the Jewish people's emphasis on life. That was one of the big lessons of the Akedah when uh, Abraham was told to sacrifice Isaac. And uh, he was told at the last minute, no, don't do it. I've seen how devoted you are now. But one of the lessons was, don't think, by the way, that this is an ideal to want to try and get to heaven. The same with Aaron's sons when they were so intoxicated with uh, intimacy to God in the temple that they ended up dying and, you know, going straight to heaven. God said, no, that's not the way. Yes, it will be full of ecstasy. It will be so, you know, close and divine closeness is great, but that's not the purpose for why you're here. The purpose is for God to come down and infuse himself in the lower world. Now, I know this got a bit religious, but this is actually touching on the deeper foundations of what will create a, uh, hopefully, a shift in the, the, you know, a very extreme Islamist worldview. And this really touches on the core of the Jewish people's message and why the Jewish people have survived and thrived for so long, because we don't focus on serving ourselves. The Jewish message has always been, don't focus on 
your existence and serving yourself because it's often we're often used to the fact that it's not an easy existence our message has been focus on serving god focus on making this world better choose life and that is the big difference hi thank you so much for watching to watch another one click here to stay up to date with all our content click here to subscribe and if you're able to you can help support jtv to grow and grow by clicking join below this video where you can become a member and get perks including early access to videos and private live discussions with me but most of all you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world